the fourth richest man in the world, Bill Gates, he's just invested a significant chunk of his sizable fortune, 130 billion US dollars, into a new idea. Now, this new idea is promising that it can deliver wind generation, wind power, at one third of the price of current wind turbines. If it's true, I mean, if they can really deliver this, it's gonna add a massive amount of money to Bill Gates's current fortune because this is some incredibly big claims. Now, keep in mind, this industry is enormous. Billions of dollars are currently being invested into this technology. And if this product works like the company says it does, like Bill Gates says it does, it's absolutely, one, without a doubt, the game changer of the century. If we're able to bring the cost of wind generation down by that much, one third of where it's at today, it would easily beat solar. It would be the king of renewable energy worldwide. And really, people would have to say, what are we doing? Let's just go for wind and nothing else. Maybe. Here is what it is. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Great to have you. Welcome back, everyone else. Just want to point out, we've just hit more than 100 million views over the past two years. So thank you for subscribing to the channel and supporting the future of renewable energy and electric cars, because that's what this is all about. Battery technology, renewables, and what's actually going to happen by 2030. I personally think you've got to invest your money now. I believe time is running out. And I don't say that for any kind of clickbait reason whatsoever. I firmly 100% believe that time is running out to invest because we will hit the singularity at some point over the next decade. As Ray Kurzweil has predicted, this could be part of a singularity. Bill Gates and many other investors, I believe, are investing as quickly as they can, as much as they can into this future technology because time is of the essence. Once we have AGI, it's game over. If you didn't invest in some part of that plan, some part of that success, well, there's not much you can really do with your money by then. That's what a lot of people think anyway. This new technology looks nothing like a typical fan on a stick wind turbine, but it has an oval track with evenly spaced wing blades, and it could be an enormously disruptive addition to the renewable energy mix worldwide since it slashes the cost of wind power to staggering lows that the world has never seen before. Wyoming's Heirloom Energy, so this is a US company, has come out of stealth mode they were trying to keep this quiet with a new CEO fresh out of Google X. US $4 million in seed funding led by Bill Gates's Breakthrough Energy Ventures Fund and a radically different technical approach that it says fundamentally upends the financial equation for wind farms. They are clearly saying it is a game changer and it could be. If it can do what they say, it is. Wind turbines are getting absolutely enormous. Some of them are bigger than football fields. I mean, a lot bigger than football fields. I'm talking about just the turbines themselves, just the blades themselves. Some of them are actually taller than the Eiffel Tower. As some of the larging moving machines in history, they keep on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. They'll continue to get bigger because the bigger they get, the more efficient they are. The greater the energy incentive becomes to make the blades even longer. And realistically, this is causing some problems. I mean, companies are racing to get bigger because they know that it's a better return on investment for businesses that are buying the turbines. But that does mean some of them are having some pretty big issues. Anyway, their sheer size increases cost at every step. The materials, manufacturing, transport, getting the things to the site is a huge endeavor. Logistics, construction, and maintenance budgets all take a severe hit when you're dealing with enormously long blades, tall tower structures, and massive generators that have to live at the top of them and support the blades. Heirloom's approach makes everything much smaller. It's very different and much, much closer to the ground. A 2.5 megawatt heirloom setup would use a number of 25 meter or 82 foot poles to suspend an oval shaped track into which a series of 10 meter wing blades are set joined by a cable. By today's modern standards, these wind turbines are literally minuscule, like sailboats, which can harvest motion energy from wind in any direction except dead ahead or straight behind. These blades harvest wind energy as they travel around the track, which is oriented 
such that its long sides are angled for maximum wind capture and its short ends are spaces where the blades can change direction as the rest of the blades haul them around. Power takeoffs harvest linear motion from the cable to run generators. When a regular wind turbine gets maximum torque from the tips of its blades and very little from the bits closest to the hub, the full length of each of the heirloom system's blades will contribute to hauling the whole loop around with effectively a short break twice per revolution as they turn around at the ends. Thus, a 2.5 megawatt heirloom track will fit on a single truck. It won't require enormous turbine tower cranes or huge climbing cranes that are starting to pop up. The parts can be built in relatively small factories from non-specialist materials, and every part of installing and maintaining them becomes easier, cheaper, and safer. This would mean that companies would be much, much less likely to order these ginormous turbines from these huge Chinese companies and have them shipped all the way across, half the way across the planet, which of course is bad for the environment in and of itself. It would mean that very likely they would be made locally. Compared with a regular turbine, for example, this 2.5 megawatt rated GE unit, a 100 meter diameter, 328 foot fan supported by a hub held 85 meters or 280 foot high on a tubular steel tower, Heirloom says a wing track will be less than 10%, less than 10% of the cost. However, that means the cost is incredibly cheap. I mean, you could put one in your own backyard, 225,000 US dollars. Adding the land requirements and a full wind farm setup promises to be less than 25% of the capital cost at less than 6 million for a 20 megawatt wind farm. They've done all the equations on this. Now, there is one challenge here. You need the size, the land. If you have the land space, this makes sense. But if you're in a place that's densely populated, for example, uh, a city, you wouldn't have this anywhere near a city. It needs plenty of land. It would work really well in a place like Australia where we have just desert upon desert. Places where there's deserts, places where there's, there's non-arable land, very rocky land, would work really well there. At the brass tax level, says newatlas.com, Heirloom claims its design will bring the levelized cost of energy, or LCOE, of wind energy down to about one third of what it costs today per kilowatt hour somewhere around 1.3 cents per kilowatt hour, making one of the cheapest forms of renewable energy much, much cheaper. This actually is a game changer because that equation, 1.3 cents per kilowatt hour, that's cheaper than solar. But not only that, it's also a technology that works at nighttime, it works in the daytime. But this is not considering the facts here. And the facts are transporting these wind turbines halfway across the planet and then across cities, across townships, across blah, blah, blah. It's a logistical nightmare. That all ends with this. That all ends. And it also ends the country's dependence on these mega Chinese companies who pretty much own the market now. It's a game changer in more than one way. It also promises to be far less visually intrusive than the enormous tall wind turbine towers that often cause projects to get cancelled because basically people say, we don't want that in our side of line of vision. We don't want that in our site. And then the projects are cancelled. This makes these projects relevant to a much wider range of sites and much less opposition. Now, apparently these turbines are capable of scaling horizontally to the point where the tracks can run for miles and the height of the system can also be altered to make maximal use of a given site. For decades, the wind industry has lowered the cost of energy production by scaling ever larger turbines, said Carmichael Roberts of Breakthrough Energy Ventures in a press release. Although this has been extremely successful in driving down costs, the approach now faces challenges in terms of both sitting and cost of materials. Heirloom's unique approach can solve both these problems, opening new market opportunities for wind energy that will further drive down costs. We look forward to bringing this revolutionary technology to market. With smallish scale prototypes already up and running, Heirloom will use its seed funding to prove the technology with a 50 kilowatt test device and we'll move to commercialize and scale it from there. I'll be interested to see if the capacity actually backs the manufacturer's claims. That's the key question here. Does it actually do what they say? Now, there's one thing that I'm seeing here that could be problematic. I mean, being low to the ground, you would think in theory, you wouldn't be able to access the strongest winds because 
big wind turbines being so high in the air does give them access to stronger wind power. However, Heirloom says the idea will work offshore, where the bulk of the best wind resources can be found. And if that's the case, then actually that makes a lot of sense because people also claim about them being built offshore. So companies have to build them far enough offshore that people can't see them. Uh, so obviously that would mean generally around about 20 kilometers or about 12, 13 miles offshore because the curvature of the earth means that you won't see a high wind turbine if they're that far away. But if the wind turbines are much shorter in height, then they could be much closer to shore without people seeing them. If this machine can really pump out energy at a third of the price that we're seeing worldwide today, it's unquestionably a game changer. And Bill Gates, while being a very rich man, might be able to jump up from fourth richest man in the world to third richest. Who knows? Honestly, I couldn't care less about what Bill Gates' personal riches are, but this technology is awesome. If he backs it and it succeeds, then that's great news. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.